right now we've got the Mosin set up in the uh, uh, Forster Products uh, drilling jig. So a very nice jig. It allows you to do a lot of setup. It's very precise. Uh, of course, you can cut holes for your bases for your scopes. You can also use it for sights. Um, it's got an extension arm you can add to it to go all the way out to the muzzle. It's a very nice fixture. We're going to go into detail another time. I think Eric's going to do a review on this. But we're going to drill the holes for the mount for the rock solid today. And uh, I've already set it up. It takes a little while to set up. That'll probably be done in the review as well. So just uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and drill it and we'll show you the final process once it's all done. I'm going to get the correct drill bit and go ahead and drill that uh, before we tap it and I've got to get the screws for the rock solid mount and check the pitch and the diameter. On With there. this particular action it doesn't matter if we go through uh, we're not going to be going into the bore with it so we're going to not worry considering that we're going into the recess where the locking lugs go on this particular hole. And occasionally clean your bit off because it will load up with chips. If you've got compressed air, you can use that to clean it out as you go. Keep some oil on it, keeps your bits from wearing out. Some cutting oil. Cutting oil. Mm -hmm. Any oil is better than no oil, but a good high sulfur cutting oil is much better for your tools as far as long life. Okay, all through. Now we're going to grab our larger diameter bushing so that we can guide our tap through the hole. We're going to grab the tap and the T handle out of the kit here. We're going with a 10 by 32 tapered tap. Starts easier, cuts a little easier as you're going, and we don't need a bottoming tap since we're going all the way through. And again, Oil is good. Never move your fixture once you've got it set up. Drill it and tap it without ever moving your fixture. And you won't have any problems with crooked holes. Take your time on this because that metal is a little hard. If you feel the tap starting to bind a little bit, back it off. It's about every eighth of a turn I back it off and break the chip. <clears throat> Definitely want good sharp taps for this hard steel. They don't last long, you have to replace them pretty often. Okay, we've already transferred the um, the punch mark from the mount. We've got the uh, got it screwed down. Uh, I've got the overarm back over, but I'm going to slide it out of the way. You can see where we put the uh, center punch mark through the hole in the mount. I'm going to put the overarm back over it. And we've got this, part, this piece that goes in the um, screw hole and will allow you to center up and tighten the overarm in exactly the right place. No, the police aren't coming for us. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Just get in there and give it a little tap and verify that we're in the same place. Centered right in there. Make sure your overarm's down tight. Okay. Grab your drill bushing. Number 21. On this particular one, we're right over the top of the chamber, so we do have to be careful about depth. I've got the drill set into the chuck so when it stops 
keeps it from drilling too deep. You can always just pull that bushing out and have a piece too, you know, or use a feeler gauge or something of that matter if you need to, right? Or not a feeler gauge, but maybe a calip caliper. Yeah, you can use a um, toothpick with marks on it to measure your depth to the center point of the drill. Lots of different ways you can do it. If you've got a depth micrometer with a pinpoint on it, that's awesome. But not everybody's going to invest in that kind of tooling. Uh, we got cut through the... Um, I'm going to blow this trash out because we've got to be real careful about our depth. One thing I want to mention um, with what we've been doing here, we are using eye protection. Anytime you're cutting metal, you always want to make sure you use an adequate eye protection, uh, especially when you start to go uh, blowing things off with your compressor. You get one little tiny bit of metal shavings in your eye and it can be a bad day and a very expensive uh, trip to the uh, optometrist or just not good. To make sure that you get a perfect depth on this, you want to look at the distance between the drill bushing when it's on clean metal surface all the way against your receiver. Measure that. All right, we've got uh, like 480 thousandths. All right, you can also take and measure the same distance from the top of the overarm down to the receiver. 522 thousandths. See all that math that you guys thought you'd never have to use? You're going to have to use a little bit of it someday. All right, that's going to give you the distance from the top of the bushing to the top of the receiver. Add those two together, you're going to have uh, just over one inch, right at one inch. Call it roughly one even inch. All right, you're going to take that and decide how much more you want from the tip of your drill to the tip of your chuck. How deep do you want that to be? You can go by the thickness of the receiver. If you want to measure the wall thickness of the receiver, or if you have the um, knowledge of how thick the receiver is there, um, it's going to be roughly tubular, so we're going to call it about 275. Alright, you're going to take that one inch and add 275, so 1275 from the tip of the drill to the jaws of your drill chuck. So we need to lengthen that a tad. Drill moved. Hmm? Drill moved. Other holes already drilled in the receiver. Um, ended up being right in front of the uh, barrel so don't take that for granted though don't take that for granted We'll put a little bit of a chamfer deburr on the top of the uh, holes there. It's pretty clean, but you don't want there to be any real edges or anything. We've got a little stone here because that's very hard. That'll wear out your uh, chamfering tools unless you've got a carbide tool handy. Spray cleaner or compressed air to get the dust out of those holes is all you need. Watch your eyes. Alright, so we've gotten the uh, base put on and our rings and scope. And what Ray has here is a bore cider. 
put into the rifle and we're basically trying to get an idea of whether or not the scope or the mount itself is going to need any sort of shimming before we put the set screw in the side of it. So you're looking at it, Ray. How's it look? Uh, not too bad. It's going to be a little bit, a uh, little bit of adjustment necessary. You can try a POV if you want. Oh, that's not off at all. Hmm. Well centered, left to right, up and down adjustment. Probably can get it on there with just adjustments in the scope. Yeah. I'd say not bad overall, considering how rough the receivers are on these guns. Yeah, that's good. Let me zoom back in on that. So basically we have our laser in the bore, and that's showing us where the bore is looking in relation to where our scope is.